Hello, this is Mr. Miller, and this is a very short video on combining like terms. We just want to do some examples so uh, you're okay on the work that you are doing. So uh, here we go. The goal of combining like terms is actually to make expressions a lot simpler, if possible. So uh, taking a look at this first example at A here, we look at the kind of terms we have. I see we have terms with x's, those are like terms, and I see we have constant terms. So sometimes we have students underline these with different colors. Uh, I use one underline mark to, to underline the x ones, and two underline marks to mark the, the constants, the numbers. All right, so we're gonna combine the like terms. We have seven x's and we're adding three more. That would make 10 x. Okay, so we can put those together. Uh, we have an 8 and a 14. Those are two number terms. We can add them to get 22. And that's what we get when we combine like terms. The original one had four terms. This one only has two things. It's a little simpler. Okay, if I look at this one, we have m's and we have p's. Negative 8m plus 4m would be negative 4m. And then I look at the p's. We have 2p here. That counts as one. If it doesn't have a coefficient, we can assume it's one. All right, so we have two p's and we have one more being added there. So that would be three p altogether. So notice that we're not changing exponents. We're just putting things together we can put together. All right, so here we have x squareds and we have constants. Those are two types of terms. We can put the x squareds together. They have the same variable part and that would be nine x squared. Negative 10 plus a negative 6 would be minus 16. We put those two together. All right, this next one looks like we have A's and B's. We have 5A and we have minus 2A. Think of this negative as going with the 2. 5A minus 2A would be 3A. We have negative 6B plus 9B. That would be 3B. That's our simplified expression. Okay, let me see. Here we have five terms. Let's hope we can get fewer. So we have 4x, 9x, and a minus 3x. Those are all the x terms. Okay, so 4 plus 9 is 13. Then we're subtracting 3. So that would be 10x altogether. All right, we have a minus 5 or a negative 5 being combined with an 18. That's 13. All right, on this one, we have three different kinds of terms. We have x squared, 4x squared minus x squared. Think of that as minus 1x squared would be 3x squared. We have 4, we're subtracting 1, we're left with 3. Okay, we have 6x and we have 2x. 6x plus 2x is 8x. And then we have a third type of term. We have a number term this time. We have a 9 and a minus four. Okay, that'd be plus five. Okay, so three x squared plus eight x plus five. One key thing I want you to realize here is that x squared terms and x terms are different. They're not like terms. This x has a square, this one doesn't. Their variable part's not the same. So like terms are when the, the variable parts are exactly the same. All right, on this one, this is a long and crazy one, but these aren't hard. Let's underline all the A terms, okay? And I missed one there. Let's add them up. 4A minus 5A would be negative 1A, plus 8A would be 7A, plus six more would be 13, minus four would be nine. So when you add up all those numbers, we get 9A. All right, let's do the Bs. All right, we got 3B, any other ones? Minus 7b, that's minus 4b, that's all of them. Okay, let's do the c's. We have 9c here, and we have plus 4c plus 5c. 9 plus 4 is 13, plus 5 is 18c. Okay, so I don't know if that helps you or not. Maybe you're stuck on one, but hopefully these examples kind of get you going on this. All right, good luck. Thank you.